Hello viewers, today you are going to have a session on e-business. You may wonder why we selected this particular topic because it is not there in your curriculum, but just with the intention that everybody should know the latest concepts or latest trends in running business, we selected this particular topic because you too should know what is meant by e-business, what is meant by e-commerce, the words which we are hearing very frequently nowadays. Dr. Nageswarao is with us today. Hello sir. Hello. Dr. Nageswarao is Associate Professor in the Department of Business Management of Usmania University. Dr. Nageswarao, will you please explain uh, what is meant by e-commerce and e-business because we are hearing uh, these two words very frequently nowadays and is there any difference between these two or can we use these terms interchangeably? Basically e-commerce is a process of buying and selling, it is oh. a trade. But whereas we can treat this e-commerce is one of the components of the e-business. For example, like e-business is having various components and among those components e-commerce is a one of the components. But whereas e-business, it is going to consider the e-commerce and followed by other components. As, a, as we discussed the e-commerce is the like the process of buying and selling, but electronically. And In general way commerce means buying and selling. Buying and selling, yes. but the e-commerce is electronic, electronic buying and selling. Yeah. But whereas this e-business after considering this component and it has to use the latest technology, technologies right. that are available. So, it is going to combine these two and trying to go for the maximum supply chain management, customer chain, customer satisfaction to maximize the business opportunities mm -hmm. and by using the latest technique that is available with us. So, as you said. Uh, so, from what you said it is clear that uh, e-business consists of both e-commerce as well as it should use latest technology also exactly. uh, for better customer relationship management or better supply chain management. Will you please elaborate uh, this relationship? Exactly. We have to consider various components which I told you. For instance, you take in a typical business example mm -hmm. and each business they have to consider both supply, supply in the sense they have to get the material and after process it, they have to transfer to their customers. And the second important thing is that like they have their organization structure, but sometimes they want to go for the restructure of their organization. And the next point is that like how to sell to the customer to get the maximum satisfaction from him, because the today objective is like you see and every business they want to, they want to retain the loyal customer are the customer who is profitable to the business. So, for all these things you see and we cannot go by using the always the traditional methods because the customer also nowadays is demanding and his expectations are more. So, for that what they have to e-business has to do whatever the latest technologies that are available to us to the possible extent try to consider those latest technologies and implement it right from the manufacturing process to finally, the reaching product to the final customer that is the end customer. So, are there any different components of this e-business? Exactly, there are components and like uh, as I told you electronic commerce is one of the components mm -hmm. and the second component we have business process optimization and the next component we have supply chain management and the next component we have customer relationship management and also we can talk about the various portals that exactly required to do the, this e-business. Is there any basic objective behind uh, having all these components in e-business? Because the e-business is a broadest sense, it has to consider like you know when you are trying to process from one part to another end. So, it has to, but the stage wise it has to come, here we required customers. So, we have to provide better satisfaction to them and we have to consider supply chain management. Supply chain management in the sense, we have to procure the raw material and we have to see that the process is going smoothly and we have to see that the product is going to be delivered on time to the customer, so that the customer satisfaction is maximized. And all these things you see, 
we are doing with the help of internet. So, when you are trying to do the entire business in the form of the internet, and it definitely we need to consider various components as yeah. yeah, such. Yeah. Like, we need to have so many websites, we need so many hub portals, and we need to have so many call centers, and we need to have so many point of sale terminals, yeah. and we need to have a, some strategic planning. This is strategic planning, you see, that is related to the both the demand as well as supply. Yeah. We have to consider supply and we have to consider the demand Demander. and how to match these two into to maximize the customer satisfaction. Will you please throw some more light on this e-commerce? And so far the most of the countries they are doing the business with this e-commerce only mm. and due to globalization and the human being movement is reduced and for example, you try to take a one consideration of doing transaction traditionally or with e-commerce. Like an, org an organization is spending nearly dollar twenty-five per electronic transaction. Oh. But whereas if you want to do the same transaction traditionally, they are spending nearly one hundred and fifty dollars. So vast difference. Vast difference. So this is the one like the between the dollar twenty-five and dollar one hundred and fifty. This is not only the question. And today customer is not, it's having the time movement also, like he wants to reduce this cycle time yeah. and so that he is having lot of benefits. Not only that customer, the organization is also having to reduce the cycle time. Right. For instance, earlier they had one month cycle time, but now they cannot do the one month cycle time because the customer is not waiting for that one month time. Yeah. So Immediately he want that uh, product or… Exactly. So, the month time, the month time has reduced to days and I think surprisingly these days also may be reducing to hours also. Hours. So, these are the various things that we need to consider. So, in that process, I think we can take up the first component of the business process optimization. Yeah. Will you please explain about this business process optimization? Madam, what I think exactly is meant by it? Exactly. Madam, I think you have read about the system development life cycle. Yeah. Every subject is having yes. system development life cycle like that our business also mm. is having system development, SDLC, right. products are having PDLC, yeah, product development life, product life, cycle. life cycle. Like when we are trying to get the material from the supplier, like for that supplier also who is supplying the material that is also important to the organization. Like in the business process optimization means, first we have to identify, we have to see what is our like vision, mm. for what mission is required for that. And in that how many components are there? To meet each and every component, what are the available technologies to us? And try to shoot that technologies and even before that try to understand that problem like which is understandable to a human. Unless we understand it, we cannot implement the right technology. Sometimes we fail to understand the technology, but some technology is available to us and try to implement the technology and ultimately you remain as a failed person. So, you mean to say that uh, first the business process has to be optimized manually and Manually, then it has to be ma ma optimized and manually. And then we should uh, use the latest technology. Yeah, exactly. After that we have to use the appropriate instead appropriate. of latest technology. So, many latest technologies are available to us, hmm. but try to use the, the required or the shootable technology to us. Are there any multinationals which are using uh, uh, this uh, BP business process optimization? There are many multinational companies that have used this BPO business process optimization and they got the fruitful results. And out of that the best example we can see the, the company which is familiar to so many ideas that is the Dell computers. Oh. And this is the company 100 percent they have applied the BPO and they have invested millions of dollars for the purpose of this business process optimization. And that is why they are able to del deliver quality product with the state of art of technology. Oh. And they are able to create new customers and retain their loyal customers. And they are able to financially they are, they are sound and they created a senior citizenship in the entire world, the concept of the senior yeah. citizens. As I mentioned just now, if you go and purchase a product in the market, so whenever you have from problem after sales service, okay, you can get from the seller. 
But uh, how about the software sales service in this e business? In this e business, you see, let you consider two important components like one is front office and the second one is end office, yeah. back office. The most of us we know what is happening in the front office, but we do not know what is happening in the back office, back end. But today, customers they want to know what exactly also happening, but not exactly what is happening, but they want to know their status. Today, you have ordered a product. And definitely you want to know the process of building and definitely you want to know how when the product is going to be delivered that is shipping. And uh, I think we may have our own doubts even about the quality of the product we are going to get. Exactly, exactly. So how this front office is trying to interact with the back office mm. and so all these modalities once the customer is able to know I think definitely he is going to build a sort of confidence on that company. Like profit maximization, wealth maximization, our financial management students know. So that is of course, those are the objectives of any business. Yeah. But today, like try to turn your business into any electronic business and after that try to make your business more and more intelligent. So once your business becomes more and more intelligent, intelligent. definitely what are the things that you, whatever the, I am trying to talk about the SEM, CRM, yeah. business process optimization, portals, all the technical aspects automatically will take care. So shall we switch over to the next concept that is uh, CRM, customer relationship management. Yeah. How it is related with this e-business? This is e-CRM, electronic customer relationship management. And uh, this is absolutely the forefront of any company today. This is the, when they are trying to manage the customer relationship management. As we just discussed and now they have to retain the loyal customer. But in this electronic business, how they have to retain the loyal customer? Like as we discussed, we have to provide all the latest technological facilities that are available to us that we need to proceed to the up to the customer that is the end user. For example, now many companies they are trying to establish call centers and integrated voice response systems like, oh. you, like you are trying to call and you are trying to get the integrated voice response systems and so many websites they are creating. So whatever the information that need to gather, they are trying to gather from the web websites itself. When you want to order a product through internet, through the website and whatever the information you are not able to gather from the external world independently and you are able to gather the information from all these sources. So this absolutely built the better customer relationship management between a customer and the Management, management or the organization. Oh, so you said that the supply chain management which you referred to just now is also another component of… This is uh, the supply chain management, the latest and the one important concept in the C yeah. business. Supply chain management. Let us consider one example like here. When you want to buy a product, I think sometimes I want to buy a computer, I have, I want to order directly from a company. But companies never deliver directly computer to you. Mm. They have their… Uh, uh, vendors through vendors. them they have to push oh. the products to you. Some mediators. Mediators. Yeah. Like, but when you want to buy a computer from somebody and they just not leave you, they will take your address, they will take your email ID and so on. And after some time they will be calling you whether you bought the computer from that customer or not. Hmm. So here you see that trying to establish the supply chain management that means even like today so many companies they are trying to develop so many logistics for their suppliers 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 oh, suppliers 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 and which is very like expensive affair today but even though the companies they want to develop the why they are trying to develop this logistics in the sense they want to reduce the complete cycle time they don't want to wait because their customer is not going to wait for anybody yes, anyway. so that's what and again this supply chain management, even they are trying to develop a logistics for their customers, customers also. Mm. Suppliers, supplier, supply, supplier and, also and customers, customers, customers customer. also. That means my, my company's direct customer is say like a retailer. retailer. But the, from the retailer, the product has to go to the end user. end user. And ultimately the end user satisfaction is one, the company need to have it. That is why they want to develop a logistics, they define logistics where the supply chain management can take care, this logistics will take care, 
the entire supply chain management. Are there any problems or challenges in the supply chain management, Dr. Rao? Exactly, madam. Instead of, we can say problems, let us say it's a challenges. Okay. So, once we met the challenges, definitely the supply chain management is having so many pitfalls like it requires, you know, infrastructure, like infrastructure facility both internally and externally. But how many companies they want to invest and how much they want to invest this infrastructure? That is a major problem. Financial uh, soundness of the organization. Is exactly. Every important. concern wants to turn into an electronic business, there is no doubt about it. But the thing is that how much infrastructure they require to discharge all these components effectively. Like one area you cannot computerize and another area you cannot computerize. Once you want to go for completely, you have to go. So, for that definitely it requires a lot of investment. The second one is the concept in this database management is an over enthusiasm. Over enthusiasm means we have a lot of infrastructure, we have created that infrastructure. But after creating that infrastructure, because of over enthusiasm, we are creating lot of information to the customer. In that time, customer is not able to find the required information because you have created too much information. Too much information. This is called information overflow. Once the information is overflow, it is the customer also may not be interested to go through the entire information created by you, that is by organization. Yeah. The second one is that like once the information is overflow, even sometimes organizations that is IT professionals also confusing from where they have to use it. And another important aspect which we have to consider like the speed and the transparency. Like one area we have too much speed, the another area it has to cope up with that speed. That means, the integration of the two units with the same <coughs> speed. If there is no integration between these two, between two units, yeah. the one will the overflow, the un, another will be under. Underflow. The next one, the general problem what we are facing today is transparency. Many companies they do consider their data, their valuable information is so confidential which they do not want to discuss to anybody. Yeah. Uh, shall we switch over the last component of uh, a business that is portals. So, so please po explain about this business portals. Exactly. So, portals is a simple concept madam like portal, portal, portal is something like you know uh, is a gateway to the internet. Most of the time the people are confusing with the portals, but there is no need to it is a gateway to the internet. Like the gateway to the internet means how you are logging in and how we are coming out. And like sometimes you see we are, we will enter into a website, from that website where we are going we do not know yeah. and how we are coming also we do not know. So, meantime you see. Shall we describe it as Padma view home? Padma view home. Yeah. So, you are entering and where you are going you do not know and now you are coming, abruptly you are coming from one area to another area. area. So, that whatever the like electronic knowledge you have gathered, I think that may not be serving your purpose. At present, let us consider the internet possession worldwide nearly more than 200 million users are there. I and especially that. when you consider the developed country like United States, even 50 percent of the households, of course all 100 percent business organizations they are having this facility. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you consider about the households, 50 percent people are having internet facility internet facility and so far in this e business nearly they have invested dollar 150 millions they have invested and this is expected to go nearly 1.3 trillion by 2380 oh. so once they have invested this much amount definitely because people are having some uh, misconceptions about this e commerce and e business like many companies they are introducing this concept or they are going back. But it is already witnessed with so many companies like they have implemented this for the B2B solutions, B2B, B2B. B2B solutions. Oh, but what is the status in India? India considered like even though we are considering as a like uh, many a multi developing. developing country and mul many multinational companies are presented yeah. in our economy, but still when you say the component of the e-business, we are far behind from China, little above oh. Pakistan. 
and it is considered to be a mere 5 to 7 percent of the total e business what we are discharging. Only 5 to 7. 5 to 7 percent of the total no. world e business, business trade. E -business. This is because of so many factors, madam. That is number one, like you know, basically our country is agricultural country. Of course, China is also agricultural country. So the thing is that the literacy rate is here very low. Less. And the second one is that the fear of implementing new technology. The fear because of two reasons, which is involving high cost. And even though with high cost, even you implement it, how the results are to be. So, this is another important aspect we have to consider. The second one, as we said, is a developing country. And we are not in a position to invest lot of amount in the infrastructure, which is required for this business. And our participation in the international trade is not very high. Once you participate in the international trade, now international trade is, is bit reducing, it is not in the increase, even though it looks like an increasing, but the growth is not that much. Once you participated in the international arena, the alignment of the international trade forces, what I mean to say, so then understanding of the sea business will be more. We have with us Bharat Bhushan Rudra, regional head, retail banking, ICICI Bank Limited. How are you, sir? Thank you. Sir, the electronic business is taking an advantage of the IT and today many organizations are trying to achieve their objectives to make their business more and more intelligent by taking the advantage of e-business. So in this context, what extent the bank sector as a whole has implemented the e-business applications? Thank you, Professor, for asking me this question. It's a very prominent, important question in the sense that it provides an alternate cha channel through all the customers uh, who would be banking with the banking industry. Uh, let me take you back to the year 1997 when our bank, ICSA Bank, started with uh, internet banking. Uh, we looked at uh, the model with what we call brick and click model. Brick model for those who would like to have the convenience of a branch nearby and where they can come in and do their banking business. More and more people have now shifted over to this channel, internet channel, which we launched in 1997. Uh, looking at the world view in this, uh, there are about 1.3 trillion US dollar business in this uh, internet banking. And there are about half a billion customers all over the world using internet for this purpose. In our own country, we have we are being the pioneers. We have over one million customers taking uh, to this channel, which we call internet banking, and we have named it Infinity very rightly. Let me also share with you some of our experiences in this as to how we leverage uh, technology and internet for banking purposes. This is one channel which has been dovetailed to a number of products in our bank uh, in order to. Uh, look at the life stages of a particular citizen from childhood to senior citizen old age. We have product which suits him which can be delivered through internet. We have uh, what we call ATMs, call centers, internet uh, infinity product which helps people to use uh, other channels other than the brick mount. And I look at it that there is a great future for this product in the days to come. In the sense that India is poised uh, for uh, internet banking, embracing it totally because it provides a convenience which brick model does not provide. One is that brick model cannot be kept open 24 hours and it needs people to man it. Whereas on the other hand, internet will provide a facility where a person can use it 24 hours a day at his own convenience and at his own place. He doesn't have to be dependent on uh, any physical channel. Now we have with us Mr. Satish Darba, Senior Business Analyst, Satyam Learning Center. Welcome Mr. Satish. Thank you. Mr. Satish, what is the role of Satyam Learning Center in developing and training e-business applications? Satyam Learning Center is the uh, unit within Satyam which looks after the competency development needs of all the business units in Satyam. Some of the business units in Satyam 
concentrate on uh, e-business applications. We have various alliances and tie-ups with various global players of e-business. And Satyam, uh, per se, looks after the, provides end-to-end -end solutions in e-business. It starts off with uh, identifying a business problem by the customer of ours in any, any, any area and uh, Satyam pitches in looking after the business problem and then identifying the business problem, providing uh, business process, re-engineering if required and then uh, suggesting we have alliances with various business units, various alliances and various uh, global players in the business uh, domain. So, we can suggest a solution for uh, the business problem which the customer has and we also take care of the implementation of the e-business application and its maintenance. So it's completely an end-to-end -end business uh, uh, solution you can say in the e-business area. However, absolutely there is no doubt and which we are moving toward a forward and so many multinational companies they are implementing the same concept and obviously Though our country is done, they will be implementing. So, it. thank you very much, Dr. Rao, for being with us today. Thank, thank you, you, madam. Thank you very much.